Next oh. question is from Music Guy saying thoughts on Macron's EU presidency and the EU's push for strategic autonomy. Um, I don't have much to say about this. I Maybe a little bit about the strategic autonomy, but you go go for it. All right. So first of all, um, this is whatever we say is going to depend on whether or not Macron is going to win <laughs> in the election, in the upcoming election. It's going to happen soon, I think. In, I think in a few months, um, but you know the powers that be are shifting. So in the European Union, the main it's always been the power. The main two powers were Germany and France, with Germany having a little bit of a lead, right? And now the power is shifting a little bit from Germany to France, right? France is like becoming more of a leadership position if Macron managed to manages to win the elections, right? Um, and it's very interesting because Macron always had this push for basically, you know, we need to be more independent from United States and NATO. We need to have a purely European, we need to be a purely European united force because we can't rely on these goddamn Americans, right? Because the Americans have different agendas. Like, like it made like historically ever since World War II, this, this like marriage between Western Europe and United States and Canada made a lot of sense, right? They're culturally aligned, ideologically aligned, uh, globally, they were anti the same things and pushing for the same things, pushing for the same world order against communism. Oh, so it just it was just perfect, right? They were like, uh, but now as things are keep like moving forward, the agendas are different, right? Um, the United States has this very like China focus, which might not be in line with exactly what Europe is best for Europe. Um, both the both the policies on Russia and China, which is ma the main two things that the United States is now occupied with that might not align exactly with the rest of the European Union, right? Um, however, this push for the, the problem with the EU is like the EU is supposed to be like an economic, you know, group, like they're united over economy. It was never supposed to be a military union. It was supposed to be an economic union. You know, the military union was like NATO. And for NATO, we had like, but the thing is that NATO's agenda and the Euro Europe is not going to be that in line because of how much United States is involved in NATO, right? And now Ma Macron's philosophy is that we need something, we need a union like that also military-wise, not just economic-wise, given, given the different agendas that we have. The problem is, well, even within the European Union, the, the foreign policies is like, they're not united, like they they don't have the same views as well, right? So you're like, oh, Macron is like, oh, we're so different from the United States and that's why we need to not rely on them and have our own force, right? But like, well, you're not like each other either. <laughs> like there's a lot of countries in the EU that have different views on relationships with China and Russia. Like there are disagreements within the European Union as well, right? So that made Macron's push for this autonomy very difficult until, until what happened? Anybody in the live chat? Anybody uh, in the live chat? Belarus? Uh, no. I mean, Belarus could help as well, I guess. But AUKUS. Oh, yeah. Yeah, AUKUS happens, right? And Macron is like, because when AUKUS happened was a deal between Australia, United States, and, um, you know, Great Britain. Um, and it wasn't like a lot of people like that was such an F you to France, right? Because France was sidelined. But it wasn't just France that was sidelined. It was the entire European Union that was sidelined, right? There was no talk with the European Union, no information, no sharing, like nothing. Like as if the European Union is not even part of any equation, right? Um, so France is like, 
look, these people are not taking us even seriously. Like they, they're like we're a joke to them. <laughs> like we need to be a force together <laughs> because we're being sidelined by the like they're creating these uh Commonwealth like countries are just going about and just doing things together mm-hmm. um and building all these alliances of forces and they're not even taking the EU seriously that's why we need a powerful force together so AUKUS was a major good put like so so all major good PR push for Macron to suggest that okay like European Union needs a, needs to be united like um become autonomous independent from United States um, another thing is that there's a lot of issues around the borders of EU that requires the European Union to manage its borders without as a whole rather than each country doing it a, a thing uh, managing it by itself and if you if you keep if you keep increasing the task force that is responsible for guarding you, you, the EU's border, because that's already a, like a, it's going to be a semi-military force that could also set precedents for like well we have that that could be built used as a framework for eventually building more military units that is for the eu as a whole honestly i hope that's that becomes successful i don't know if it will um because i do think like right now is like the most powerful military forces are what united states and china right so I do wish that we had, it's not going to get there, but I do And guess who's in between? (laughs) What? Oh, Geographically, who's in between the two? Oh, yeah, 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 you're right, yeah, yeah. No, but I do wish that there was like a more human rights focused, powerful military force on the planet as a way to compete with, like, so that these whole human rights narratives becomes a, there was a competition that made them more real. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't just like talk. I mean, it is more than just talk sometimes and sometimes not. But if it was like, if it wasn't just like a competition between China and United States and we had like a third powerful military, I mean, it's not going to get there. European Union can't even get like enough money together to, um, I mean, they're, they're so behind. But if they, if they are successful, it would be a welcome, you know, balancing you know, it will balance everything out to to some extent. You know, it will push, yeah, I agree. move things in a in a move the forces, military forces in a in a direction that has relatively, again, relatively. Don't tell me like, whoa, but they did this and that. Okay, relatively better standards. By the way, like another thing that shows how um, how the different motivations of European Union countries are when it comes to military action is so different, and and that's what makes uniting them over military so difficult is that France is so involved in Africa, <laughs> right? Which other European country is so disinvolved in Africa, right? So what are you, what are you going to do? Like, you're going to, like, with that agenda, you're going to, you know, it's hard, like, you know, like, oh, we're so different from the United States. That's why we need our own military. Well, France, you're you're also very different from every single other European country when it comes to military military presence, right? So again, so again, we'll see what we'll see what happens. Those are my thoughts. Hey guys, if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Cali, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.